A throwing technique requires good coordination, skill, speed, and a lot of practice. So in today's show, I'm going to look at how to train efficiently to have better throwing techniques. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Scott, and welcome to another episode of Freestyle Judo. Well, today's show, I'm going to focus entirely on throwing techniques, but more importantly, how to train efficiently for those throwing techniques. And, you know, thro throwing is teaching someone to throw, learning how to throw is a long learning curve. It, it's, it's not easy to do. It takes a lot of time, effort, practice, and certainly patience, okay? So drill training and efficient use, good use of drill training really will help enhance the, the students learning how to do a throw, okay? Um, you know, I think drill training is essential because it gives structure to every practice. And, and if you've, any of you have read any of my books or have watched the show before any of my other videos, I sincerely believe that you have to have a structured practice. You just can't just show up and say, well, let's work out today. You have to have a plan. And that drill training gives you a plan. It gives you a focus and what to do. It also, drill training allows me as a coach to explore um, a lot of different situations that really do come up in a, in a, you know, in a real contest or competition or, or a street you know, fight, type thing, that type of thing. So drill training can be very creative as a coach. And as an athlete, you, you might find these type of drills more interesting than just showing up and just doing thousands of uchikomi every practice. Okay, So we're going to emphasize today on the full throwing techniques, not just uchikomi. We're not going to do any more uchikomi right here. We're just going to do right now the throwing practice drills. And again, just 10, 10 of them. I had to limit it to 10. So these are the ones that I've used pretty much over the years, mostly. So we're going to look at them here, just 1 to 10. I'm not going to do a lot of talking in between, just give a brief set up for each one, uh, but we're going to go right at them. First of all, I'm a believer in crash pad training. I, I think crash pad training is very efficient. <clears throat> you shouldn't just limit yourself only to crash pad training because you need to practice throwing on a regular tatami or mat area because you're not always going to have a crash pad there to, 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 for your partner to land on. And sometimes crash pads actually impede practice. Uh, there, there's some certain moves that I, I want to have full range of movement, and a crash pad might, might limit my full range of movement. So there's some you know, drawbacks in using crash pads, but for the most part, they're very good in uh, cutting down injuries. And plus, I can throw, I can have my students throw a, a lot more repetitions every practice a lot harder. Okay. Now, there are people who say, well, I've done hundreds of full judo throws on a hard tatami mat all my career. Well, that may be the case, and good for you if that's the case. Okay? But I would venture to say this. My argument is this. If you did 100 full throws every practice without a, tatami, without a crash pad, you could have done probably 200 with a crash pad and thrown them even harder. And that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, these are a great tool. Crash pad is a great tool. So some of these drills will be using crash pads. Some we won't be using crash pads because you should balance your training out, some using crash pads, some drills not using crash pads. And it's really important that you have this balance. So I'm not saying just exclusively use one or the other. Use them both. It's a great training tool. It's a great training piece of equipment. I say use it, okay? Also, I might say on these crash pads before we get going on the videos here, it's really important to, to teach your students as a coach. For me to teach my students good ukemi, break fall skills, okay, right off the bat. And don't teach them to land on the break falls on a crash pad. Teach them on a regular tatami or mat area because that way, you know, in, in a real competition or if they should fall on the slip on the ice, they're going to have a crash pad to land on. And sometimes learning how to fall on a crash pad does impede the actual learning, or the, the skill learning of the ukimi movement, of the break falling movement. So it's important to have good break fall skills in addition, beforehand I should say, before you use crash pads. And again, break falls are essential and they, two reasons break falls are essential. One, for safety. And number two, it gives you confidence. You know you can take a fall. So you're more willing to take that fall to get up and throw your partner in practice. So learning good break fall skills 
is essential to doing good throwing techniques. They, one leads right to the other. So I want to stress that before we get into these throwing drills. So anyway, that being said, the first throwing drill is a crash pad drill. And it's just a general drill. And in it, this uh, Kenny, Kenny Brink and his guys over at Welcome Ad, his kids, and some of his adult, adults too, it's just a general crash pad throwing drill. And you can use crash pads in, in different levels of intensity, different for time drills, everything else. But in this first drill is just showing Kenny working with the kids, and the, the guys are just throwing each other, taking turns throwing each other at a general workout, just a good workout, and working on the throws they want to work on. You know, one I think he's, we've got three crash pads going there at the, at the club, and on one pad they're doing one thing, another pad Kenny's teaching some younger children on another one, another pad the adults are doing their thing on their, their mat. So crash pads really give you a kind of workstations to use too. So you can see uh, this first video here, Kenny Brank is just showing, is just having a general crash pad workout session. So here we go. First one on crash pad training. Here we go. We're doing crash pad training here at Welcome Mat. It's an early Saturday morning training session. And we have three mats going. Looks like we've got 10 or, 10 or so athletes on the mat. Early morning, it's hard to get everybody together. But here we are. The, uh, People are willing to get up early, and that's what it's about here with Coach Brink. So we have been doing about 45 minutes of uh, good training leading up to this. We a lot of moving uchikomi, a lot of moving throwing. And now he's working more on the power aspect of the ballistic aspect of getting good, <laughs> solid, hard throws, throwing for control and force. That's why we work on the crash pads. It's also a good time to, uh, you know, the full movement, the full throw with, uh, without worrying about pulling up or anything. It's, uh, you, wanna, you can land them completely on the eight, six or eight inches of foam, whatever it may be. So when you use crash pads, use that as part of your throwing training. It's not the only thing you're going to do because, again, and you can do different types of crash pad training. The guys are doing just stationary throws. Kind of taking on the line, you know, how many times, maybe two or three times through, whatever, depends on how many guys are you're working with you or people are working with you. You know, the coach is moving from group to group, helping them. It's the time he can do a lot of personal coaching, too. Front squat. Crash pad training is... Uh, a really, I think, an essential part of training for throwing is you want to develop the power and the speed and, and strength into the throw. And uh, you, want to, but you also learn to you can make mistakes and correct them here with your partner and help each help each other out, push each other. We're kind of keying in on the adults here. We got Kelvin and Mike and Derek taking turns. There are different types of drills you can do on crash pads. What uh, Coach Brink's having him do this morning is really just kind of more of a, a general practice, work on the things you like to work on, and he'll come around and help. So it's more of a coaching session as well, working with the pads. Because the three adults are pretty skilled and they're helping each other quite a bit. They don't need as much attention as the kids. So coaching standpoint with the dynamics of coaching on a mat, this is what's going on here. Again, it's practice. That's the point of this. They come to practice and this is part of the practice. And again, the old saying is how you practice or how you train is how you fight. So we want to, we want to train realistically and crash pads help you do that. They help you learn to throw fully, commit fully to the throw, and put all the power into the throw. So just a general crash pad throwing session here. Okay, like I said before, you can use crash pad training like any throwing training, uh, different levels of intensity. This next video is going to show 
a little more intense crash pad drill. It's a timed 30-second drill, and the, the team is running back and forth across the mat, throwing each other for as many good, good efficient throws. Not just get throws, get good efficient throws, and as many of them you can do on the crash pad for 30 seconds. And you'll see what I mean when we show it here. So it's basically I call it the run, grab, and throw drill. So here we go. Good throws, good throws, good throws. If you leave your partner in the air, it does not count. Oh, good throws. You so that can be a pretty intense drill, and it should be. Those are for athletes, young athletes, training for a competition. And I think when I took that video, they were all training for one of the junior national tournaments that year. So, it, you know, you can, again, you can focus that crash pad training how intensely you want. This next one is, this next is another crash pad drill. And the guys were just going down the line you know, throwing down the line of the crash pad. You'll see what I mean when you start here, but it's a movement drill and it's a moving throwing drill, but using a crash pad. So here we go on a, a throw down the line of the crash pad, you know, kind of a moving situation drill. So here we go, third one. You see this crash pad drill, Kenny Brink's junior team here. They walk down the side of the mat. Johnny has Dante there, and you see he throws them onto the mat. So he's moving to the side. You can use any throw you want. The drill here is for forward throwing techniques. So here's Mike. You can see the drill. So they're coming along the side of the mat and throwing onto the crash pad. The kids here practicing. And there you go. Yeah. 
See, we're, we're walking along the side of the mat and doing uchikomi, or not uchikomi, but full nagikomi, full throwing practice onto the mat. So you watch how they walk along the length of the mat and they throw. All right, so let's take a break from crash pad training right now and let's do a, a drill that I've liked to do over the years and have used, have used it a lot actually, and I think it's a great drill. It's what I call a four way throwing drill. You can do it as an uchikomi drill as well. But to step up, now uh, to do actual throwing drill, I think really is necessary. In this particular case, we're not using a crash pad. We're using a regular tatami. And pretty much, uh, I'm going to take my partner. I'm going to move him backward or forward and throw him over, say, Serenagi. Move him forward, boom, throw him. Move him backward, throw him. Move my left, throw him. Move my right, throw him. And it's a, a four-way directional drill. And the purpose of this drill is to teach movement, okay, to each, to each step and throw. You can take one or two steps, but generally, if you take a, find a guy that takes more than two steps with you, you've you got a sucker there. So I, I generally have it at one or two steps where they step and throw. So you'll see what I mean, in four, in four different directions, and you can do them for, you know, I'll do a set, you'll do a set, you know, I'll do four throws, you'll do four throws in each direction, and that's, you know, set for me set for you we can go 10 sets how many ever you want you can make it as intense as you want or you can just work on skills so again you can make this four-way throwing drill as intensely as you know different levels of intensity and levels of you know minor cooperation generally it's a good cooperation drill because it teaches movement so anyway this fourth video is the four-way throwing drill so here we go we're doing the uh, four-way drill for throwing. So we're going front, back, left and right, or right and left. And there you see it. We did it with the Uchikomi where we did a four-way drill front, back, right and left. But in this case we're doing it uh, with the full throw. And it's thrower's choice. And Eric's doing a knee drop in that case. Okay, keep the flow going, guys. Keep the flow going. <laughs> there we go. So, what they're doing, they're trading throws. Four in a row. Right, so they're the new guys. Boom, that didn't work out so great. That happens. Okay, that's why you come to practice. I wanted to switch arms. And this is our four way drill. He did it front and back, now he's going to do it sideways. And he's, he went to, he moved to his left, now he's going to move to his right. So, and then it'd be Eric's turn. Front, back, right, and left, good clean throws. We're not using the crash pads on this one. We're relying on good Ukemi skills to make, make sure we land safely, which we advise everybody to do. There he stepped it one way. I'm not sure where he, Eric stepped in there. He stepped him backward. Now he's going to step him forward. He's doing Harai Goshi. And he's going to move laterally now, move sideways to the right, Harai Goshi. And he'll, do it. he'll move to his right, to his opposite direction to the left. To the left, I should say. There we go. So that's a four-way drill. Now this next drill, I like to I like to combine uchikomi and throwing together. Uchikomi and nagikomi. Nagikomi is throwing practice. Uchikomi is fitting fitting type practice. So I like to combine them too often. You know, do do it very often. So th and this next drill is a lateral, and you can do it. You know side you know directly back and forth but we do I do a lot of lateral movements with all my guys so it's a lateral uchikomi and throw drill so basically I'm taking my partner down the mat I'll do an uchikomi then an uchikomi I'll do three or four uchikomis you know whatever distance I have and then 
I get to the crash bed, I'll throw them. You don't need to have a crash bed. You can, you can do it without a crash bed. It's totally up to you. But we've been using a crash bed quite a bit uh, in, in my drills, so we're going to do it here again as well. So basically, I got my partner, uh, maybe step or two Uchikomi, step or two Uchikomi, step or two Uchikomi. You know, as many as I do the length of the mat until I get to the crash bed, and I'm going to step, throw them with it, immediately, soyanagi, whatever it might be. So it's a lateral sideways moving uchikomi and throwing drill on the crash bed. So here we go. Okay, what we're going to do is a uh, side moving uchikomi into a crash pad throwing drill. So it's kind of a combination uchikomi and crash pad throwing. So watch Derek. He's going to move Dere down in direction. Lateral movement, side moving. What are you going to do, Sayanagi? Yeah. Okay, Sayanagi. He's going to move him down. Sayanagi, just watch him. Step, step, fit in. Step, step, just keep going on to fit in. And should we try to get about three in there and this and toss them and throw, okay? All right, come back. And Dre would do it on Derek. And let's, let's say, stay with Sayanagi Nagi tonight. It's a pretty good basic to do. Fit in Sayanagi. There you go. Step, step, Sayanagi. And this next one, he's going to step, step right into a crash pad throw. Whoa, that was a wild one. But you got the idea, right, guys? Okay, let's go ahead and team up and sidestep, side moving down Uchikomi, finish with a throw on the crash pad. Go get him. Let's go. Okay, now this next drill is another combination of kind of an Uchikomi and throwing drill. What I call is the load, walk, and throw drill. And, and the purpose of this, it's very good for beginners, by the way. The purpose for this is to teach someone, to a student, to pick, your, pick his partner up, load him onto his back, say, say, nagi, uh, and, and I do a lot of Sayanagi drills because it teaches good movement. You can use any Koshi Garuma, Ogoshi, anything you want. But let's say Sayanagi. I load them up with Sayanagi, get them on my back, and I have to maintain my balance and form the entire way. And I'm going to walk, you know, maybe eight or ten feet, you know, maybe six feet. And then when I get to my crash pad, I'll throw them. Now, you don't, again, you don't need to use a crash pad. You can just walk to a certain area and throw them. But the purpose of this drill is to teach your students. This is, like I said, a great drill for, for new students, but it's also a good drill if someone needs to maybe some remedial work in a particular area of, of a th forward throw. So uh, pick them up, load them up, walk down, you know, several steps, throw them, nice clean throw on the crash pad. So it's, it's a load, walk, and carry, and a throw drill. So here we go. Uh, this will be the sixth video. So here we go. Great Uchikomi uh, 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 crash pad drill. It's a lot of fun. And basically, it's a, it's a pickup and fit them in and walk and throw drill. Okay? So, what it teaches you is you're going to come into, let's like, say, 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 so Derek's, okay, Derek, can use a, he wants to keep his form as perfect as he can, and he's going to pick Mike up, and he's going to walk him into the crash pad and throw him clean. So, he's going to pick him up, he's going to walk him. And he tosses it. Oh, when they get up, it'll be Mike's turn. Okay, Mike, will you shoot? Good. And what we're shooting for, guys, here is oh, perfect. Make Mike walk him walk down. He's going to do this. Koshi Garuma. Oh, okay. Any forward throw will do. Whatever you like to do. So that's what the drill is about. We're going to do one more time each. So just, and you can take, you know, five, six, seven steps. You don't have to take a lot of steps. But it's just going to walk the man up. Walking. There you go. Well, we'll go shoot with a stick and leg out her eye action. Okay. But you have to. Mike, Mike got all fancy. Got, what's that? Mike got all fancy. Mike got all fancy. So Mike's going to do this. I was going to say Nike. He's going to walk him. Did you see each time they controlled the movement entirely? They didn't rush up there and fall down. They threw cleanly on the crash pad. Very hard. It's a hard. You know, you can do it without crash pads, but it's no fun. You know. And. It really is good for teaching good technique. And we do this once in a while just to break up the training. And it's a, it's a fun crash pad drill. So we go all three out. So get your partner, just avoid the post. And get your partner, walk him down, toss him. Let's do 10 throws each. How's that? Okay? Let's get a partner. Now, the drill you just saw isn't a real intense drill. It's more for, you know, learning skill and, and you know, movement and balance, that type of thing. The next drill is a little more intense. In fact, it's a lot more intense. This is without crash pads, and basically it's a throw, drag up, and throw again drill. 
Okay. And I picked this drill up off of uh, my good friend John Saylor some time ago, and I, I think he used it quite a bit at the Olympic Training Center when he was the coach there for the judo team. And it's an intense drill. And what basically it, it teaches great movement uh, in combination, teaches good combination action. So the idea that I use a lot with my guys, you're going to see the drill here in a second in this video, is we're doing a Kuriyashi Burai sliding foot sweep, one step, throw them, drag him up, come across body osoto, throw him again, drag him up, then it'll be his turn to do it to me. And what it does is teaches you, if say you don't get that first throw, you try to you knock him down just partially, you can drag him back up and throw him again. It also teaches you good footwork combination. As soon as I throw, I you know, as soon as I do a foot sweep, um, you know, I get the habit of also coming into another technique after that. So it teaches good combination skills. But it's a very intense drill. It's a very intense drill. And the guys I had modeled for me <laughs> are, uh, are TJ and Nick, and they both played college football. And you can sure see it when you do the, see the drill here because they're really throwing each other hard. So I, I kind of calm them down a little bit. Don't, don't throw quite as hard. When, when Mike Pennington gets in, uh, he gets in and he throws not quite as hard because he's, he's, uh, he's done the drill a lot before. So anyway, you'll see what I mean here. It's an intense drill. It's throw, drag up, and throw again drill. So here we go. This drill is a real good drill for teaching aggressive throwing. And what it is, guys, we're going to, uh, it's, a, it's a lateral movement. It's a sugiyashi type movement. And uh, TJ is going to start first. And what he's going to do, he's going to do a, a sliding foot sweep on Nick. And as soon as he does that slide, one step, one step sweep, as soon as he does, he kind of drags Nick up. Does the, he drags him up. And he's going to drag him up and come the other way with an osotogari crossbody, osotogari, or a motion type thing. And then be his turn, and it'll be his turn. Back and forth, we'll like do a set of 10. What this drill teaches you is to be real aggressive in a one step attack. And if that doesn't work, you might even have to, you know, if, if the foot sweep doesn't work, boom, you don't you can be throwing partially or you don't even throw them, you still turn and hit with the other direction or so the guard. So you'll see what I mean here. So guys, just demo a few of them. Drags them up, steps in. Yeah. All right, all right. He played football too. All right, so it's, and it's the other guy's turn. He'll step and sweep. We'll drag him up. You see, it's a hard drill. Do one more set each. That's enough for you guys. But you see what the idea is. It's a, it's a real aggressive foot sweep. So go ahead and set it up. He drags him up. He steps in. And you don't have to, you don't have to bury him every time. Right? Okay, you can you can be nice to each other. You can be nice to each other. Yeah. Uh, but remember, if, if you do bury this, they're going to turn it up. Okay? Uh, sweep. Drag them up. And steps. I learned this drill from John Saylor years ago. And um, it, it, it's, it's a very aggressive throwing drill. And what it is, it keeps you do, move, moving. And it's also a good fitness drill. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it really t does toughen you up. It's a hard one. Hard thing to do. So don't you have to throw quite hard as they were every time. Okay, remember that. And you t take care of each other. But at the same time, it's not something we do on the crash beds because the crash beds would impede our movement. Okay. So slowly, without throwing each other so hard, let's parse that out just a little bit again. Okay. So make sure you get room. Make sure you get room to move there. So what he'll do? He'll do a one step. Yeah. Or a crash band. He'll drag him up and he'll step the other direction. See how? With the Osoda Garden. Okay, and then Nick would reverse it. Okay, so Nick would do the step to the crash of the and he drags him up and he comes in and he turns. And you notice each time, let me use one of you guys here just to demo. And when, when I throw him, if I'm throwing sweep here, I'm also coming from the throw from this direction here. Okay, so I'm really working this elbow. I'm really working this elbow. Because when I throw him, I want to make sure sweep. Bam, two hold, drag him up, and when I step across, I'm really working that elbow, kind of like that. So it really teaches me to be a very, very aggressive guy. And if you might actually, you know, I might try to switch sweep, and he might fight off of it, and I'll have, then I'll have the idea, no, I miss that switch sweep, I'll come back here, and I'll hit the other side. So it's a very good thing about a reaction 
you know, kind of what they call a Renraku Waza or combination technique. Okay, and you're going in a different direction. So it, it teaches that as well. So it's a pretty aggressive drill, okay? Let's do a set of, you know, we'll, each of you guys will do, like, let's do 10, okay? You don't have to bury each other as hard as these guys are doing, but let's do a nice throw, drag them up, boom, that's one for you, you probably do one for you. Let's do 10 rounds of that, and that's enough of that, okay? Okay, well, that's a good hard drill, and that's enough for anybody. Okay, this next drill is going to be uh, a great drill to teach transitions, but it also teaches as a secondary, not as secondary, just as importantly, it teaches you to uh, be in a strong position after you throw your opponent. So after you throw somebody, you don't want to lose control of your body and just land on them or just fall any old way. After you throw them, you have to have good kime or, or, or finish. Okay, some people call it zanshin also means pretty much the same thing. But th what this drill teaches, it's a Koryashi Barai. As soon as I throw my partner, I immediately go into Jujigatami. Now I could use any other technique. I could use, go into a, a pinning technique, anything I want really. But we do a lot of Jujigatami and, and so it's a great transition. So this drill is a good throwing drill because you take a full throw it's, and I don't recommend doing it on a crash pad. It's not using a crash pad, regular tatami. So it's good sliding foot sweep of Koryashi Brai, immediately transition to Jujigatami. So here we go. This drill teaches you a lot. It teaches you good timing for your foot sweep, of course, but it also teaches you to follow through after a throw with a nice arm lock. But what it really teaches you as a thrower is when you throw to have good balance after you throw your Stay opponent. So you can apply good arm lock. You see what I mean here in a minute. If, if Derek doesn't have good balance after he throws Jake here, he he can't do the drill. He can't do the move. So he's got to practice. This teaches good balance. He's got to practice it. So uh, watch us do step, step, sweep, and just go ahead and, and do uh, arm lock. Drop. That's the drill right there. That good build up for that. But what can you come back in and then we'll get? It teaches Derek, or the guy doing the throw, a lot. It teaches you good sweeps, of course, good foot sweeps, and good timing. But it also teaches you to follow through. But the third thing it really teaches you is to remain balanced after you throw them. Okay, you got a solid balance after you throw them, and throw them with control. And that's what this really does teach, actually. So let's do step, step, sweep. And good. You see, I just stepped right over. He stepped right into the fancy, weird stuff. Swept. Okay. I'm still putting my shin in his ribs. Okay, so it's not like I come through like that. Okay, there's too much space in between there. Make sure that when you do the sweep, knee comes down. So now I'm right under, or right over. He's right underneath me. Foot comes, collects the head. So that's a head sit. You go right into a good head sit or shoulder sit in control position. So you notice he didn't do anything weird, he just was there already. One more time, watch out. He doesn't have to do anything exaggerated. He just squats, sits on his head, sits on his shoulder, and walks back and gets the juju and time. If he gets it too, a little bit too far away from you, just take a step in. But, okay. And again, I might add on that uh, last drill, you can use any combination of throw into a pin. It doesn't have to be a Koryashi Barai. I like to use a Koryashi Barai a lot because it teaches great movement and good timing. And I don't think you can get ever get too good at foot sweeps. So that's why I use it particular in this particular case. But I tend to use that a lot anyway in this particular drill. Okay, the next one is Sotai Renshu. And there are a lot of ways to do Sotai Renshu. And Sotai Renshu is basically partner practice and a practicing with a partner. And <clears throat> I use it a lot, and just, it's a give and take. I throw you, you throw me. You can do the same thing for even ground fighting. You know, I'll do an arm lock on you, you do an arm lock on me, whatever it may be. But it's used often in throwing uh, skills. And I like to use it a lot for just a general practice. When the guys just want to come in and they want some kind of a structure and just working on their techniques, I'll say, okay, guys, let's do some Sotai Renshu, partner practice. Uh, I'll throw you, you throw me, give and take, you know, total cooperation. 
Uh, and let's work on these range of movements, these range of throws, okay? And the, the video I'm going to have here, the show here, I think um, Eric and, uh, and Tony were working on um, sumigeishi, hikumigeishi. And so they wanted to focus in on that during practice. So I said, hey, let's just get, have a give and take. And again, <clears throat> they, were, they were helping each other, coordinating. You know, I was behind the camera kind of talking to them a little bit. But this is a great idea. This is a great time for your partner to be a good coach. You know, he, you know, the, when you when I throw my partner, he'll say, "Hey, do this more, do that more." I can say the same thing for him. So this is a great opportunity. Like I say, uh, sometimes the best coach on the mat is your training partner. So it's a great opportunity for your your coach, your partner, to learn by your mistakes and maybe help you in yours. But again, so tyrants, you can be a lot of different levels. Okay, in the video we're showing here, it's, it's relaxed in a learning situation. We can make it very intense. I can say, okay, let's do back and forth. I throw you, you throw me, uh, as many as we can do good ones on a specific throw for a minute or for 30 seconds or whatever it may be. So you can, or I can say, okay, I'll do one, you do one. Let's do 10 rounds of that where we each do 10 throws or 50 throws, whatever you want to do. So Sotai so Renshu basically is partner practice. You can make it as intense or non-intense, non -in, uh, uh, you know, lesser intensity, uh, totally up to you. Uh, you as the coach and you as the athlete. So anyway, this is a good kind of an um, example of how to do Sotai Rinshu. So here we go. So, hey, Eric and Tony, why don't you talk to us and tell us what you're doing here. It looks like a, uh, are you doing sumigaishi type yes, stuff? Yes, sumigaishi, and we were working on different grips and entries. So, Come right over on top. Yeah. Can you, Tony, or... Eric, either one of you guys, show me your setup for that with your grip. How, how, what's your initial setup with that grip? So t show me. Okay. Well, let me ask, perfect guys, let me ask you this. Can you uh, come into that again, either one of you? So you start with a, with a low sleeve grip, with your left hand on the low sleeve, right? Your right hand works up, gets his opposite lapel there, nice tight. Okay, and that, that, that really controls the far and the, and the side there. Okay, good. And you come in and step across and knee and you come right over. Good. And come right over on top. Let's look at that setup grip. Can you do that again, Tony, for us? Let's talk through that. So with your left hand, you take a low, no, your left hand, get your left hand on the sleeve. No, his other, okay. He's working there's your, out to the grip. Oh, he's working out of the grip. So right, there you go. Okay, but, but let's key in. See that left hand sleeve there? Okay, now your right hand comes under his armpit and deep, as far as deep as you can, okay? And now with that left hand, you're, you're controlling his far arm and you've got his shoulder and upper body with your right hand. And I see you're leading with your right foot and you're stepping across with your left. Okay, and that pulls out and you step and you put your jam foot in there and you sit back and you roll. And so you, when you would sit back, you would really sit back on your right buttocks and hip and roll him over that side, wouldn't you? Okay, show me again, would you? See, got you, okay, good. Step, uh-huh. Jam that foot in, I guess. Okay, and then come across. And in a real situation, you would just roll right into a, a pin. Can you do that, just flow right into that pin, this transition? Now you, you come, you did more of a Hikomi Geishi there when you, you came forward in the front as opposed. Let's do that from the side like a Sumi Geishi and just, just pin him. 
Okay, just do your, your sumigeishi, and as you roll back, now just roll right over and pin them. There you go, right there. Now you just did a hikomi geishi, where you did the same grip, but you came directly into them. Can you show me that? So you got your cross grip there. Okay, good. So show us the step in with that that makes it different from sumi geishi to hikomi geishi. Show me the step in. That one was more right with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? I see. Uh huh. So you step in deep with your left foot. Right. So your right foot would be coming up into his thigh. So your 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 shin, your right shin would be fitting into either thigh. Is it a preference to you? Which thigh is right thigh or left thigh? I see. There you go. And because you're coming more in front of him, it's more of now we're talking more of a hikomi geisha. Dragging him around. Makes sense to use it to get Okay. Now, Eric, I notice you're not grabbing his far lapel, and that's totally okay. That's yeah, a personal I was, uh, preference, I was isn't it? Sticking with this kind of Russian uh, style grip. Yeah, two on one. Okay. So, so you like yeah, that's a very good control because you're totally dominating his shoulder from there, aren't you? Right. And I want to step in, plant this thing while closing all of the space between the players. Step in. Bring it around. So where where Tony was grabbing the far lapel for control, you're just really controlling it near shoulder. I'm just locking up this half of the guy. Uh huh. And as long as I park myself in his waist area, I can feel the space he's coming with me because I got that. So I'm gonna get inside, bring my hips in. Right. Make sure I'm low and close. Well, that's that's a that's a good action. It's different. Again, it, it's very similar. Sumigeishi, Hikomigeishi type action. But how you tie them up in this particular case, a two on one uh, a Russian tie or what they want to call it. Mm -hmm. And you're starting more from a side angle, and but you're by coming in front of them. You're kind of turning it into more of a, a direct hikomi geishi or pulling down the backward roll as opposed yeah, to a sumi geishi. Right. So, you know, really a lot of these, they could blend in, you know, do you call it a sumi geishi or hikomi geishi? That's, you know, kind of depends on the situation, depends on the angle of the attack, and depends on your preference. So guys, these are useful for, as a good hard throw, but also a great transition to, to ground fighting. That's quite good, there you go. There you go, that's more of a Hikomi Geishi. Great guys, thanks a lot. Okay, we're at drill number 10, and there could be a lot more, but these are the ones that I've used the most over the years, and I, that's why I wanted to present them to you here. Um, this is another uh, lateral side moving drill. I do a lot of side movement with my guys because I was heavily influenced from my coach, uh, who I thought was just a tremendous judo mind, great, great coach in my opinion, Rene Pomerel. He liked to do a lot of lateral movement, sideways movement. He said because, you know, most people are strong front and back and even to the corners. But sideways, they're very weak. And you can control them more, more easily in, in lateral movement or side movement. And I, I found it to be true 
in my particular case with with myself and a lot of my athletes too. So uh, that's just, we've done a lot of lateral movements, a lot of side moving drills over the years. And here's a good example of one. And it's a back and forth uh, lateral throwing drill. So I got my partner and I'm gonna, and I, as you'll see, I'll explain it in the video here. I move to one side, I move to the sleeve side, throw them, boom, get up. Okay, pick them up, okay, get them up. I move to the lapel side, throw them, boom. And it's his turn back and forth, okay? In this particular case, we're using Serenagi because Serenagi is a good technique to work on getting the whole body movement, the whole turning movement in. So it's a good general technique to use in just teaching and learning good body movement, okay? You can use any other technique you wish. Uh, it could be any throw. But in this particular case, we're showing Serenagi, Pon Serenagi, I believe. So anyway, this last drill is the back and forth lateral movement throwing drill. So here we go. It's a really good way to learn this. We're going to do Ippon Sainagi, but I'm going to move them a step step and fit in and throw. Then you want to get to one step and hit. This is look like this. The first, first pattern is this sideways. Stay in the grip, to the cut. I'm holding my right hand on the lapel. I'm starting to half step behind this. That's, that's essential. You want to fit in one of my body. I'm about to be in the right position. So when I do this, when I do this, you can do it. Step, step, stop. Okay, so top, this left hand is a real big pop here, okay? Right, and it, stand, stand on you. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, so step, step, top, stand on you, okay? Then it'll be to the right, it'll be to the lapel side, right? Now, then we're going to change it, we're going to go to the sleeve side. But how I start my body is important here because I want to make sure that my, my, my hips are in the correct position to get in front of them. If I start, you notice I start this way when I'm doing this way. If I start this way, if I try this, I'm going to get off of them. I'm in the wrong position. So I'm still going to start. If I have the tension to move it toward my, the sleeve side, when I, when I start my initial position, I want to be here. I'm still going to be on the half step behind it, but to the other side. And we'll step, 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 pop. And when I do that, I have this nice hole right in here. Matt, can you clear and see? This nice hole right in here. And step right in. So now, okay? So if I come this direction, the same side, I'm starting to half step behind it. And step, step, pop, step in. So now, I have you just been a couple Notice he's starting half step behind him. He's going this side first, okay? All right. Go ahead. Well, okay, see how you do that? We'll do what you call me at first, but you want to get to that point of throw. Now we'll come back the other way, come back the other way. All right. Now he starts a half step behind him, but he's going to the sleeve side. Okay? Step, step, and hit. Step, step. See, in each case, we are very concerned about getting our hips in. We can turn our body full. We want to get that complete rotation with the hip and suricomi and lifting and pulling action. Okay? Let's do one step and hit. Yeah, watch. One step is going to. This is where we want to go. One step and hit. That's where you, I mean, you have to catch a sucker to go two steps with you. You might catch him, but it's better if you do one. Now we'll come back this way. Now we'll go to the sleeve side. Step and hit. And you see, in each case, Derek was in position with his hips. And the key thing is you've got to. You gotta start right to finish right. And that's a good that's a good example of that. So he started in the right position, you know, mechanically to fit his body in the right time. Okay. And make sure that that foot is out the middle. That's that step that you take, even if I'm over here, if I push in here, that foot comes right in there. Alright? As you pop. Okay. Boom. Right? You open it up. So it's finish. Right in. This makes it very fluid. Throwing techniques can be very fluid. They're, mechanical, they're, they're, they're beautiful things. They're, it's like watching art kind of, okay? In a perverse way, I suppose. But it, it does work, okay? One more to the right, one more, just one step. 
She has a good shooting angle. Why? Because their body's in the right position to start. And it's really important, like every throw, especially shooting angle, too. All right? Let's work on it. Let's work the side movements, sitting in. Go start with two steps, and we'll work to one step. Work on your own. We'll get okay, we've covered 10 drills that all teach throwing. And did you notice in many of these drills, I think probably all of them looking at the list, they teach movement with the throwing. Uh, Jim Bregman once told me uh, good throwing techniques rely on good good movement. You know, good judo relies on good movement. And that's, that's a, I think that's tremendous, tremendous advice. I think it's absolutely true. So the better I can drill my students, the better I can drill for myself if I'm training for myself on movement and combine them together with good throwing techniques, um, well, I've got a winning combination. So anyway, again, listen, these are just 10 of them, and there are a lot more, okay? And if I didn't cover the one you particularly use, okay? But these are the ones that have been pretty successful for me, very successful for me, actually, over the years, and I've, uh, I like them. Um, I'd also say, as far as movement uh, and drilling, um, again, you can do this also with Uchikomi. Okay, uh, you know, static uchikomi is fine to correct maybe specific mistakes. I might want to reinforce a particular area. And same, the same could be said for throwing, um, if I'm doing just static or, or non-moving throwing drills. But I generally, like I said, I like to do throwing movement drills as opposed to static drills. But static drills are also very important too. So don't think you should just do all your drills in a moving, whether it's throwing uchikomi in a moving pattern. Uh, there's certainly a place and a time to have static when your partner is standing still and you're standing still and you fit them and throw them, there are certainly times for that as well. So, uh, again, drill training provides structure and and you can be as creative as you want, coach. Okay, and an athlete, you can be as creative as you want. You can train as hard as you want, as light as you want. So it, it's just fabulous training. So anyway, that's what I've done. These are the ten, to me, the ten most effective drills I've used over the years for uh, throwing techniques. So that being said, hey, thanks for tuning in. And we ju I just devoted the th show just to this only. I thought it was worthy of a, just one, one subject on this show. And uh, like I said, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.